really good fit for me. Okay. Everybody was coming at me about doing TV shows and it was always something about baby mama. Mm -hmm. Something with baby mama in it. Even if it wasn't in the title of the show, it was the first thing that I say on my casting tape is, hi, I'm LaShawn, T.I., my kids, dad, and, and it would just go from there. True Entertainment, the production company that we have now for, um, for Mother Funders, is the first production company that did not ask me if T.I. was supportive or tell me something about your kid's father. I haven't even mentioned T.I.'s name during filming, period, the whole season that I have filmed with Mother Funders. So, Carla Stevens, the president of the PTO, um, we all of us, the seven of us ladies on the show, all of our kids were in the same elementary school. And, um, I have been trying to get on the PTO because I'm usually at the school volunteering anyway. Okay. I work from home, okay. so I have a flexible schedule. And she came to me one day and she was like, you know, how do you feel about doing a TV show? And I'm like, what is it going to be about? <laughs> so I'm like, oh, here we go again. And she told me it's going to be positive. It's going to be focusing on us raising money and donating to the school. Very family oriented. And it was all in. And I thought it was amazing. When I was a kid growing up, we had the PTA, which is the National mm -hmm. Teacher Association, and it was my mom there. Well, she wasn't there, but it was moms that looked like my mom that was there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they didn't look like somebody's mom. <laughs> <laughs> and, and these ladies, they don't look, they're beautiful. They're beautiful, and they really, really, really have a passion for what they do for the school and for everyone to be able to see us doing something that we really care about, I, I think it's good. So I thought the show was going to be really good. And even <sighs> I didn't foresee the fighting. Okay. <laughs> you never do that. That, 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 was, that wasn't in the form. Okay. Originally, it was just good, wholesome. These ladies are passionate about their school and they want technology in their school and they're going to do what they can and what it takes to get it done. And that was what it was originally. It's just that Carla and Robin had so much, I guess, kind of outside drama that was taking place before filming. I think that kind of is spilled over into filming and they had to catch it. They had to capture it. Fool. <laughs> I, will, I would not lie. I, I'll act the fool. I don't want to act the fool, but I don't. <laughs> I don't. Um, the ladies that are on Mother Funder, that's. I don't think any of them. I don't think that that's what anyone is about. Okay. Um, and I talk to everyone on and off camera personally. I mean, some of the ladies we talk every day. And everybody truly wants the best for their family. And well, if we had to have somebody that was the most drama, then she would be our drama star, which would be Robin. That she would definitely be our very first drama star. She she will she will shine brightly in that department. For the most part, we all the stars. We said for the most part. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. You know, the, the the different categories of stars. Like everyone has the ability to shine. I think so if if everyone stays in your lane. You know what I'm saying? If if everyone stays in your lane and hey you this is what you do, you do makeup, you do you in the fashion, you stay in that lane right there, then you'll shine in it. With Carl Like right now I don't have my own little niche that I'm doing. I, I take care of my family. My husband has a trucking company and he's also a driver. When he's gone I'm running a business. So I'm doing that for our family. That's our bread and butter. But that's not mine. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel like it's mine. I want my own. Yes, it's ours together, but I still I feel like every woman should have their own. You need a fallback. And not saying that you you know you're setting yourself up to fail and just in case you fail, but you still need your own fallback. And I don't have that. With my sons, they're on um, family hustle with their dad. And my oldest son, he's an actor. 
I, I had to take time off from filming in December because he had a movie gig and he's a minor so someone had to be on set with him all those hours all day and I missed out on he did that that was like 19 days of filming for him and I missed out on a lot of days of filming because I had to be on set with him and my husband he was away in the truck and when he was home he would do it but that was still cutting in my time with filming so I'm doing that and then my youngest son he's into music so that's studio time that I'm with him taking him to and from the studio interviews and he has little pain gigs and, and things that he and he does and I just I don't have my own thing right now but I definitely want a management company I'm already managing my kids with their entertainment so I want to evolve into being an artist management um, owner and I want to manage kids I plan on evolving into boss because right now I feel like mom I feel like mom well, somebody I, my mom, she had a stroke. Oh, she was a drug abuser. Okay. And all my whole life growing up, like that's all I saw. Right. And now she has to lay, she not lay, Jesus, she has to stay in a nursing home because she has onset of dementia. She wasn't at home. She wasn't that kind of mom. She worked. And not, and, and not being selfish, I know she had to work. But when she wasn't working, she had extracurriculars that she was doing. And that that's why she ended up where you know she, she was vibrant, she was funny. I mean, she didn't seem her age. She didn't act her age, and she got around fine. She wasn't old. She was she was vibrant. And I go and visit her three four days out of the week, and I make sure I take the kids down there with me. Not as often as I go, mm -hmm. but I take them down there and. We take her out to eat and we sit there and we play bingo. We play cards with her and the other people at the nursing home to show them. Not necessarily, you know, at them like, boy, you need to buy me a car, but just showing them value your parents because I do. My mom is in a point in her life that I didn't get. I didn't get the way my mom is now. I didn't get that. I got a lady who worked two jobs, who was never at home. My sister raised me and she was 15 years older than me. I thought my sister was my mom. My mom would tell me to do something. I would get my sister to see if it was okay. <laughs> so that's how my mom, she had to work. She had to work and she was a single parent and it was three of us. And she was so busy and even when she wasn't on drugs with working and when she was on drugs, she wasn't herself. I missed out a lot. So now I'm so happy to have her and, and, I, and I have them go down there and visit her and, and interact with her a lot because they're teenagers. They want to sit there on their phone. They want to have their earphones in their head and leave that stuff in the car. Come in here, talk to your grandma, play games with her, you know, do things like that because this could be me one day. This is going to be me one day. So I definitely, definitely talk to them about valuing their parents, me and their dad because you don't know what will happen. I met the boy's dad when I was 13. I was able to ride the bus, go to the movies, hop on the bus, go to school. Whatever I wanted to do is I had a lot of freedom. And I actually met the boy's dad. He was 11 at the time, but he lied and told me he was 12. And that's how I met him, like being with all the freedom that I had. I was at my sister's house and she did drugs. And I was, I was just outside. I was outside playing in yeah, so I had a lot of freedom. I had a lot of freedom. So. You do. I hated school. Um, I didn't finish 10th grade. I, she didn't allow me. My mom didn't allow me to stay home, but I couldn't stay at home. And I, I, I didn't go to school. I didn't go to school. Um... I dropped out and when I was almost 18 my dad was like well come live with me I was like I'll come live with you if you buy me a car and a VCR <laughs> and a VCR and and he did he got me a car he got me a VCR and I went and stayed with him I did not go to school. but but that's why I, I'm on my kids so much about education right. um my sons they feel like 
with the careers that they have in their mindset for what they want to do as adults, well, they're actually doing it now. They don't have to have college for that. They don't have to go to school for that. They don't have, but I'm telling them, you don't know what could happen. You don't know what could happen and you need education. Uh, he was my first love. His childhood sweethearts. Yeah, so he, he was the first. Um, he was 11 <laughs> and he had notebooks full of music, like things that he wrote and I think um, at the time when we met him and a friend, we actually, we met in College Park. I was at my sister's house in College Park at, in her apartment and he was at his mom's. His mom was living in the same apartment complex. Um, and him and this guy, a neighbor who's another kid, they were, I think they were tr actually trying to get a record down. I think they had a manager, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And this was happening even way before I even came to the picture. So with his, with the drive that he had and with hearing him, his music, I, I knew he was going to be who he is now. Oh, I knew, I knew he was going to be who he is now. Yep. I knew it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Masai was the first and he was playing. And I'm only saying that because the next one was not playing. <laughs> um, yeah. So then here comes another one. Four months after I had Masai, I was pregnant again. Wow. <laughs> so she my mom's pissed by now. <laughs> I'm an adult, but I'm still at home. So I'm not an adult. <sighs> yeah. I didn't tell her for a long time. I didn't tell anybody for a long time. I cried. As a matter of fact, I was in so much denial that by the time I did finally go to the doctor, they was telling me what I was having and I was out to here. So I think I was like five months. We were in that working on that stage, you know, that's what God tell you. We work we working on it. <laughs> so we were working on it. And and yeah, we, we were working on it. And it, it didn't work. <laughs> so naturally I'm I'm feeling like something because now I'm pregnant again. Mm -hmm. I said no more. And then nine years later, I had one more. <laughs> it was almost no more. Almost. Yeah, so, yeah, I have a, I have a daughter. She's eight now. Okay. And then um, I have a stepdaughter. She's 15. Okay. Um, at first, he, he was just like any other young guy with kids. Um, and then also he had just signed with a rink label, so he was busy. But outside of busy, I felt that he should have, you know, spent more time with them, get them more. I think after the first time he went, the first time he went to jail and it was public, after that right there, I think, I think that's the time that he was on house arrest. After that, he was a completely different person. He was extra hands-on. Um, the boys, um, they would actually go to his house some during the weekdays. And he was on house arrest, so Tamika would take them to school from over there. That, that's how much he wanted to be with the kids. He's on house arrest, can't go nowhere with you in the house with all these kids. <laughs> so he, he was, he was more hands-on. And he, he was just good from that point forward. He did help me get into my house. I will say that. Um, I always felt that he needed to give me more money. Um, he was signed to a record label when the boys were little. And he was giving me $200 each for them. I didn't know any better. We had a long history. And I trusted, I trusted him that he was giving me what he could. So four hundred a month, and it was enough to pay for daycare. Um, when I did see in Forbes, I saw in Forbes. I think this was like two thousand six or seven or something. I forget how many millions they said he was worth. I was on the phone immediately with my Nokia phone. I am looking at Forbes. It says you are worth this. Why are you giving me 
$400. And he, I ended up having to take him to court. And I think this was like 2000. He ended up having a change of heart um, after my attorney advised me to dismiss my case uh, for child support. And he started giving me $2,000 a month. And um, when, you know, I was living in an apartment and then I got a house. Um, actually, when he got arrested the first time, I lived in College Park. And his mom was on the news covering her face behind the door. But she showed a picture <laughs> of, of the boys. <laughs> I, I, I never understood why she did that. And after that. People were coming, knocking on my door, asking me, T.I., your kid's dead, and this and that. Somebody broke into the apartment, stole everything that we had, and I was terrified. So I talked to Tip, and I let him know, you know, how scared I am. Everybody stole everything. He gave me some money to replace, you know, everything that was stolen in the house. I was so grateful. He did that, and he told me, he was gonna buy me a house. He said, "Pick what you want. I'll get it." My stepmom, she's my real estate agent, was looking for houses, and I found something in Clayton County. Although I didn't want to be in Clayton County, I was on that cusp of, of Clayton County and Henry County, which is in Briggs. Mm -hmm. And when it came down to buy the house, he ended up not purchasing the house for me, but he did give me some money to move into the house because it was a short sale. So. He gave me the money to pay the taxes on the house to move into the house. So that's how the house thing came up. So he didn't buy it, but he did help me get into the house. Okay. Um, I, we, we were good. We were good. We've always had a co-parent relationship. Um, until <laughs> I was in the house and I couldn't maintain the house. I, mean, I had a job that I loved. I was only making $10 an hour. Could not get this lady to give me more money. And um, I was working full time. And then I was going to school part time. And then now I have a house. I thought I was going to own a home. So I'm thinking that I would have utilities and taxes maybe. But since I didn't own a home, then I have mortgage. And then I have a trash bill that I had never seen before. I have a water bill now that I had never seen before. I have maintenance that I have to do in outside of the home and things inside of the home that usually the maintenance man from the apartment complex will take care of. And um, so life happened and I went to him again and I and I, um, I I talked to him, you know, about giving me some more money because I couldn't I couldn't make ends meet, even with my full time job. I, I couldn't make ends meet. And um he said, Okay. On my house arrest, I can't work. But when I when I am able, then you know, then I'll give you some more. And then when I saw that he was working, and I, I'm impatient, so you know, I go up to him again, you know, talking to him about some more money, and it just it ended up having to go to court, which was the most humiliating thing I have ever had to go to my go through my whole life to have my financial records everything that I spent down to the coins gone through by a judge and his attorney and my attorney it was the most embarrassing thing I have ever gone through the judge did end up um, in my favor ruling in my favor to give me an increase based on everything that you know my household expenses everything with the kids I did get an increase but work got hard then I was a hairstylist <laughs> a hairstylist and um, at that time I worked in a hair salon at Walmart I had just finished school because I was in school full time I mean part time for cosmetology yeah for cosmetology people were calling up to Walmart at, at the hair salon because they saw me on the news mm -hmm. dogging me out people would just come through and say little nasty stuff I had to quit I quit working up at, at Walmart hair salon and I worked at another hair salon that was close by when the word got around it, I was there. And it, it was the same thing. Mm -hmm. 
But um, last summer I had a garden. I had the rabbits eat everything. I'm so mad. Oh. So um, for Mother's Day last year, my husband and one of the boys they built me a um a garden like up off the ground, oh, yeah. whatever. So stuff couldn't get in. We put a little thing around it. So um, I really I enjoyed that. It's crazy because I can go outside today. Mm -hmm. And it's like this, whatever, a little flower, and I can go out there the next morning, and then I have a little squash right there. So, I mean, I, I really like that. So